Got a 64 GTO. This is it, the original legendary icon. So we're out at the Mr. GTO auction in North Dakota, just north of Bismarck. Got restored cars, we got original cars, we got some projects. We've got a lot of gas pumps and signs, memorabilia, got tons of parts and even some parts cars. Gonna take a walk around and show you what's here. Got the Chevy C20 four-wheel drive truck. I believe this was one that he had bought brand new. Very well-preserved, beautiful, pristine Survivor. Notice I didn't have the word perfect in there anywhere, but for the way you usually find these trucks all rusty and beat up and clapped out this is pretty pretty good survivor truck got the 97,000 original miles on her this is a charcoal gray seat that was a interior color that was optional in these years. Pretty basic truck crank window, rubber steering wheel. It's actually just a heater in this one, no AC. But this far north, we're about 200 miles south of the Canadian border, they said. So, pretty realistic to think that you wouldn't necessarily have to have AC. Four-wheel drive, yes. 74 Pontiac Catalina wagon. This is a 26,000 mile survivor. Kind of a neat history and neat original preserved features. I'm gonna do an entire separate video on this car just cause I feel like it deserves it. So check on the channel, subscribe if you're not and you'll see full walk around with the details and features of this one. 66 Pontiac Grand Prix. This car was his pride and joy. I mean, this thing, super, super well-preserved. Beautiful, beautiful restoration on this car. This one definitely was his pride and joy. And it is presented pretty much restored to as new condition. Incredibly beautiful car. And they used that color a lot of years. That 77 Catalina of mine is that same color. It's got the eight lugs. Very, very well presented car. 66 Grand Prix. Had a lot of unique parts to differentiate it from Catalina's and other ones in the line. Had that big thick rocker trim. Incredibly beautiful car. Seventy six Grand Prix. Very, very clean Survivor. It's gotten dusty sitting out here, but all the paint on that car says a great luster. 
Although the silver in places is getting thin, it's just a bad part of this old lacquer on these GMs. It doesn't have the staying power that the solid colors do. It's got the 60-40 split bench seat. This one's actually one of the lower trim levels. The LJ. But, I mean, even at a low trim level, such a fantastic car. I mean, you got a lot for your money when you bought one of these cars. It really went all out when they styled them. Just kind of recalls the 30s boat tail. It's just a car that really sharp and interesting from every angle. We got the 64 Tempest with the 326. Convertibles, fairly uncommon car. These ones that he restored all the way. And they said he was very meticulous, very passionate about them. And he did them to the standard. That car's got good poise and a good presence to it. Kept the original block with it, so if somebody wants to rebuild the numbers matching engine, that type of stuff, if you have it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the car and running. I mean, it's nice, but it helps preserve some more of the provenance and the collector appeal and interest of one of these cars. Got the 69 Le Mans convertible. It's got all rebuilt engine in it. 455 at least by the air cleaner Pontiac engines are very well marked so they're really easy to identify what you have and what they are I believe that's an original factory color on that You've got the 15 inch slot wheels It's got more of an almond white. I guess it is the pearl, pearl color in there. This is a four speed car. So that's pretty, pretty desirable combination. Even though it's not a GTO, it's still convertible with the four speed and everything. So, got the 69 GTO Judge. Just putting the hood back on. This is a Judge according to... So this is the PHS documentation. That's your Pontiac Historical Society. They have all this stuff on microfiche. And you can go send off for a hundred dollars if you have a fairly valuable car that you want to document what options it was built with so that you can tell hey these are the type of parts i need to collect especially when it's a basket case especially i mean any of these cars over half a century old people just kind of keep them going with whatever's around and so that PHS documentation, pretty important. Honestly, myself personally, 
it wouldn't have to be a really desirable car for me to spend the hundred bucks. I'd, I'd have no problem doing it for, you know, some ratty beater just to show the history of what it is. So this car, I mean, it's gonna be a project. You're gonna have to take it all the way, but it is a judge and that's pretty desirable. Like that front bumper's been replaced. It's got the regular non-hideaway headlights, but that PHS documentation would tell you what it actually was supposed to have been built with so that you could restore it to the standard. And of all the groups of car guys, your Pontiac guys and your Mopar guys, they tend to be very, very anal about putting it back just like it was. Got the 68 GTO convertible. This one's in Verdoro green. Kind of a mix and match of the interior. <laughs> this car, pretty original, honestly. You can see there's A lot of restoration work to be done to bring it back, but there is definitely not a 68 GTO convertible hiding around every corner. That Endura bumper was actually first introduced in 68. There's a commercial where they have a guy hitting it with a sledgehammer and it bounces off. They were tough in that sense, but they could get chunks knocked out of them. So it's kind of a little tough to find one in that nice of shape to restore. Pontiac wasn't necessarily sure how people would receive that Endura bumper. So they did still offer the Chrome one as an option in 68. And they actually sold more Endura bumper than the Chrome bumper cars because people really went after it. I mean, it really truly was a revolutionary design and it not only for function, you're not gonna get your Chrome bumper all banged up and dinged up, but it just totally remade the appearance of these cars as well. 69 Le Mans convertible. Somebody's just kind of hastily shot this thing orange to make it all one color, and that's about it. See, there's the PHS for this specific car. That's really good thing on a Pontiac that they saved all that because honestly a lot of others like basically all you have to work from is maybe a build sheet if it somehow survived under the gas tank and didn't get all rotted from road moisture or under the back seat they get chewed up by critters that nest in there so having that ability to document honestly could be part of the reason why Pontiac guys do have such a commitment to taking them to the standard that they were originally built to. 64 GTO convertible. This is a pretty rare car. 64 was the introductory inaugural year of the GTO. It was the legendary muscle car as it was born. It's got the red bucket seat interior in it. I helped restore a 
white 66 Chevelle with the red interior. That was a convertible also, and this one brings back a lot of memories of that car. 66 GTO convertible. He's very good about getting parts for these and putting them all together to make them as complete as he could, even if he wasn't underway restoration on all of them. That one's got reupholstered black seats looking really, really nice. That's what a restoration honestly is, is just one thing at a time, putting them together as you find the parts, repro used, whatever. There's some rare parts here, Ram Air manifolds, all that stuff is pretty dear, pretty pricey. This is an interesting one here. You had your base Le Mans, and then you had your Tempest. The uniqueness of the Tempest was it had the overhead cam straight six. And they were really pretty good design. It was revolutionary for the time. And those engineers were really brave to develop all that, come out with it. That was a pretty attractive car in the gold. Got the all original bench seat interior in it. It's a manual transmission car, which makes it even more desirable. And next to it, you've got your GTO. 66 and 7 were pretty close in looks. 66 just has a few details that you can recognize and spot pretty quick. And then a few more once you start looking even closer. And... They didn't change them just to change them. Like every year, the GTO became more refined. Like your, your 66 versus your 67 versus your 68 and especially 69. Every year, the changes that were made to these cars were improvements for engineering, for function. For performance also four-speed car more than likely that's repainted I can't imagine that being the original that one's got the original engine with it as well and we've also got a 64 GTO this is it, the original legendary icon. PHS documentation for it. Black interior console. It's a good looking car, but it's rough around the edges. It needs restoration. Take it all the way. One of my favorite cars out here is this. Was a Tempest, but they've put V8 in it. Beautiful restored wheels with brand new tires. He did also reupholster the seats in this one. Original engine does come with it. There you can see with the thing out of the car. 
it was a pretty significant engineering project to do these see the split manifold that comes into one i'm sure in the day guys probably split them and build duels who knows this car here honestly is one of my favorites that's a really really neat car it's patina down nice and this one really needs very little to just put it on the road for a while and enjoy it. Spruce the interior up some and let her stretch her legs. This GTO, rare car because it's triple black, meaning Black body, black vinyl top, black interior. This one needs restoration all the way. See, they got the documentation. Some of that old microfiche, you just kind of get what you get. It is over half a century old. It is decaying, it is deteriorating. So if you are watching this and you do have any old Pontiac that you're thinking about having documented, jump on that sooner rather than later because you just never know how long a service like that will be available. And if for any reason it ever did go away, the cars that are documented Surely that would help them hold and even build their value. 62 Electra. Convertible. It's one of the few non-Pontiacs here. Pretty classy car. It's actually leather interior. Looks like if that engine's free, it wouldn't have too hard of a job to get her running. Kind of a weird, goofy front end design on these. Some people like them, some people don't. My honest opinion is every one of these old relics deserves preservation. unless it's totally clapped. But this Buick's a good, solid restoration car. Got the 85 Fiero Coupe. Pretty legendary. Great technical innovation for GM. He's actually borrowed Citation parts. It's got the 2.5 mid-engine. This is a car that, you know, maybe they lost money on, but the reality is just for the interest and the positive press and all the car magazines that it generated for Pontiac, it really did a lot more for the company, even if they didn't sell a ton of them. And they did, honestly, take it pretty far. There was a second generation where they totally revised them. And how could you argue with speakers in your headrests? I mean, if that's not a selling point for a car, I don't know what is. New tires on it, probably would be a runner. Then we got the vintage boat. This is a really, really neat piece, but it is pretty, pretty clapped. I mean, there'd be huge amount of decay to have to overcome on that. 
And really, honestly, it's kind of one of those, if you started replacing pieces, it'd almost be like George Washington's axe, you know. The handle's been replaced seven times and the head's been replaced ten times, but it's George Washington's axe. You know what a boat is, it's a hole in the water surrounded by wood, fiberglass, or metal that you pour money into. All jokes aside, the uniqueness of this thing, this would be a super cool piece to put out for display somewhere beach it on some rocks in front of a restaurant and just let it look cool. Taylor Dunn golf cart. Not much of that, but if a kid wanted to build some Frankenstein creation and run it around, there's a good start for it. 97 Firebird, this is going to be a V6 car, cloth interior, non-running, probably not terribly, terribly collectible car just yet, but their day may come sometime. Got the 71 Tempester Le Mans look, but this is actually a T37. T37 was kind of a entry level. If you wanted some of the go fast stuff, but you were on a budget and didn't want to spend Huge, huge dollars. A little bit in the realm of, say, maybe Plymouth Roadrunner for comparison. This is kind of an oddball one here. This is a hatchback GTO. This is end of year. Malay era, smog era. And somebody did use this as a car and the salt and the muck and the ten worms have been munching on it pretty hard. But it is good relic of Pontiac's performance history. No console. I don't remember if it was an option or if it was just a plain bucket seat car. Got the molded door panels. So your early GTOs, they were all built on the A-body chassis, but these 74s, these are actually built on a Chevy Nova chassis. So. I want to say catalog quarters for a Nova. I don't know for sure that they changed that wheel arch and that door. So if you're restoring one of these, got an old Nova that you got access to for parts, that's a good way to get some of your core internal parts. 1980 Firebird Esprit. I am not an F body guy whatsoever. I don't really get that into the different models. I know there was the Trans Am and the Firebird and the Turbo model in there somewhere. But I'm just not exactly sure what made a Esprit an Esprit, so if anyone 
wants to comment your knowledge below, this would be the time. 77 Pontiac Astri. Not an Astro, an Astri. Was there a way of confusing classified ad copyists for decades to come? 74 through 77 had these aluminum bumpers. Obviously, and not just because it's sitting next to one, but you can totally see the F-body styling and design cues that were kind of trickled down the tree of the product offering. Especially, I want to say those could even be shared headlight bezels with the Camaro. Probably not, but they look pretty well identical. A lot of people hated the Vegas, but the problems that they did have mostly could be solved with engine swaps and people did everybody probably has a story of someone they know back in the day with a v8 vega or v8 astri got the 70 tempest here unfortunate collision damage on this one If you look, the door's pretty shot, but you're gonna have to pull that rocker panel and this hinge is moved. So that car is gonna take a good bit of work to get it back right. But honestly, for what it is, it would be worth doing the work. I always see one of these that you can just visually tell on inspecting it that somebody did really care about it. It just was a victim of an unfortunate circumstance. I mean, they cared enough to basically reupholster the whole car, even though it is just household carpet automatic car I want to open the hoods on all these but this one does bear a unique drivetrain that we will make a note of that is actually a Chevrolet six-cylinder and that is factory after they discontinued the overhead valve sprint engine, they'd went with just a regular Chevrolet straight six. I really, really hope that whoever buys this car keeps it original just because it's a relic of GM's manufacturing history. Power steering brackets for those are really rare. If you ever find them, they sell very well on eBay. A lot of other Chevys that didn't have power steering had that engine. Very, very unique 70 Tempest. Then we've got the 64 Pontiac Le Mans. Le Mans was kind of the in-between. This has more of the sport features and cues that the GTO did, but not going all the way with every last GTO option. It's all manual transmission too. He kind of had a thing for his manuals.
anybody back then that was shopping on a budget still retain sporty looks without having to spend all the money for the GTO. 63 Olds, this is a Jetfire. Very rare car because it has a turbocharged V8. I don't know if all of that is here. I wish I could show it because it is a really unique, interesting, odd old car. And I don't exactly see those manifolds may not be the originals because I don't see a place to mount the turbo. But anyway, that's what it is. This is the early version of the A body. Manual transmission car. I think that was a specific emblem there on the door panel for the turbo cars. Very unique rarity. Great color impact. Black over the white interior really pops. 63 Le Mans. You see those two next to each other, built on the same platform. See a little bit of the similarities and the differences. 64 Catalina. This is actually a 421 car with the eight lugs. You have to have the whole conversion for the eight lug wheels. You gotta change the hubs. It's kind of involved. But it does give the car a really, really neat look when it's done. This car just got some good options on it. Four speed, got the tilt column black on black 421 got the Ventura call out on the fender there which at this time was still a sub model under the Catalina but then later on it became actually its own model standalone and this was his very first car 26 Chevrolet so if that gives you any idea of how he got into these oldies. This one's got a bit of the Tom Joad vibes to it. Tom Joad being one of the main characters of John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. And this is a true Grapes of Wrath vehicle. cut down touring car I don't know any of the actual history on it I mean obviously it never went from Oklahoma to California but these old farmers out here they were resourceful and this is what they did we got a 73 Le Mans sport coupe This one's got the honeycomb wheels. Those are kind of desirable. So that GTO, very transitional car. And the last year that it was on the A-body chassis was this 73 redesign. So I think that's a GTO hood that's on there. This one, he put a brand new vinyl top on. A vinyl top looks good. Really, really nice. According to the trunk, it's a GT model, so it's got your bucket seats there. This is a really cool one. This is a 55 Pontiac wagon. The rear of this car, 
pretty similar to a 55 Chevy. Had the same quarters and taillight openings. They did that just to keep down the manufacturing cost. But it did get specific Pontiac taillights. This one has rare set of, I think these are Kelsey Hayes Magstar wheels. I'm not 100% on that. Tell me if I'm wrong, but they're unfortunately five inch bolt circle. I mean, they're fine for this car, but if they were four and a half inch bolt circle, they'd be pretty, pretty valuable wheels for somebody's Shelby car. They have really unique design on the front end. Got the big Indian jet plane hood ornament. It does light up. That old car's got a good patina to it. You could just kind of wipe that thing down and have a cool, cool look. 55. This one's advertised as a Chieftain, but I believe it is actually a Star Chief. Because it's got the stars on the door and it does have the extended quarter panels. That's really, really neat preserved survivor car. It does have one unique aftermarket option, which is the baby seat. Obviously not approved by any sanctioning authority back in the day because there were none. Neat accessory triangle floor mat. This is a really spectacular car. It's got the Mylar door panels, leather interior. And those actually are roof bows that simulate the convertible look, which was the whole reasoning behind the hard top design back in the day. It was a way to have that classy upmarket convertible look, yet still not be worrying about a ragged top leaking in five years. Another neat thing about the 55 Pontiac is that when Lucy and Ricky and Ethel and Fred all go camping in I Love Lucy, they tow their trailer with I believe that one is a powder blue convertible, if I'm remembering right. So every time I see a 55 Pontiac, I always think of I Love Lucy. 59 Catalina. This one's a Rust Bucket Deluxe. Just strictly parts car. No reasonable justification to bring it back, but really, really good parts on there and not a lot reproed. So if you're gonna build some of these convertibles, you know, there's 75 or a hundred grand and a car like this, pick it up for a thousand bucks or less. There's awful lot of parts on there to fix a ratty car. This 61 Bonneville, this is actually the four-door hardtop. Pretty unique body style. Bit of an odd color combo on that. These old steering wheels on these are neat too. They had like a clear plastic. Pontiac and Mopar did that more than anybody obviously not uv stable but you can have them redone they are not cheap probably 1500 bucks to recast that wheel 
There's a powder blue 55 four door. He did have a thing for 55s. There's several of them out here. We got the 53 two door post. Pretty battered old car, but it does have a visor. Got the light up hood ornament. That's a neat car, and there's a lot of parts here, like your two door bench seats are valuable. Realistically, could be brought back if somebody really wanted to. Leave it ratty. This one, I think, is a 50. Two door post. Also got the visor, missing the seats. This one's got the little overriders on the corners that people like. There's the plain chrome hood ornament without the light up insert. A lot of these is shared with the Chevrolet and a lot of it isn't. Kind of a mixed bag. 51 International. This is a barn find from somewhere. Pretty well preserved truck. Couple lone oddball non Pontiacs out here. 53. This is a Bel Air two door hardtop. Very rough car, but a lot of parts on there that are desirable that people would definitely want to have i'm kind of making a list out here just work from the best cars down to the worst ones and see at the end if something's cheap to settle for if i don't get the ones that i really want brought the two car trailer and the distance that this trip is, it's more of a trip than a person would want to make twice, so just pick two and let that be that, but that one is kind of on my list. 68 Bonneville, unfortunately this engine seized, I was looking at it. I will spill the beans a little bit. I'm kind of looking for 68 gto stuff see what would work to piece together the 50 dollar gto but this one seized engine like that doesn't have a ton of interest to me cool two-door fastback body line on that shared with a 67 and 68 impala so the whole back of the car is different, all the trunk lid and glass and everything. Neat feature of the 68 is that they did have these cool molded door panels. Those are a little bit of a engineering art thing in themselves, I think. Especially in 68. That was a pioneering design cue. Don't see that come in on vehicles till way, way later. Pontiac jumped on it early. Then we got this 68 convertible. It's a decent looking car, but you see the weather does not do them any favors. Like this front seat's all crunchy. The upholstery's kind of just holding it together. Convertibles gotta be in side storage or doesn't take them long to go away. There's this little key feature. This one's aftermarket, but I think I've seen some factory too. Maybe not on the Pontiac specifically. But that was some 
aftermarket deal and I do not remember right now what it was. So here's your in-between GTO, the old 72A body, and the 74 Nova body. Not necessarily the GTO that like everybody's gonna go crazy over, but this colonnade body was one year only for the GTO. And so it really is a unique, significant piece of the history of these cars. Sadly, this thing's been vandalized and taking it back would be a definite labor of love. So one of those, unfortunately, that either needs a parts car or it is a parts car. 55 Pontiac two-door post. Post is a desirable body style. A lot of the old drag racer guys liked them. This one actually has correct bench seat in it, which that's like $700 seat. These doors also work for a Chevy if somebody was going to part it. Just one of those, like, really on the fence, you know. It's not over the top nice enough to say, wow, restore me. But take the right parts car and build one out of two or use this as a parts car to build something else since a lot of that works on the Chevys. 56, you can kind of see the differences. 56 has the big bullets on the front. Four door hard top. Everybody in 56 came out with the four door hard top. All your GM cars, all your Ford cars, your Mopar cars. This is a factory air car, it's got the compass. Factory Air, pretty uncommon in 56. It was a great engineering thing and added a lot of cost to the sticker price so you don't see it too often. 55, same deal as the other one, project or parts, just that kind of condition. 55's got good patina on it. Pretty desirable color combo. It's a neat car. There you see the standard hood ornament without the light up insert. 69 Pontiac Ventura wagon. This thing's pretty loaded out. It's got a lot of options inside. No wood grain on the outside though. It's kind of an odd deal. But you got your power windows. You got your tilt column. You got your eight track player on the floor. Just imagine all the fun you can have in the back. This car realistically, she's rough around the edges. See the quarter rust. Roof rack, deflector. It is a two-tone car. Pretty banged up all the way around. Not a parts car. 
definitely neat and unique enough car enough of it preserved to put it back on the road but it'd be a beater wouldn't be a restoration car and that little piece there i believe is the step for the third seat i don't remember some of these in this era they were starting to have a dual tailgate that would swing out or swing down I don't know if that was Ford's or if Pontiac was doing that too. Not exactly certain on that. 